two weeks since Emma Raducanu won the US Open. And it sure has been a whirlwind for her. And of course, we're all wondering what's next for Emma Raducanu. My name is Micah Babel. I'm a former top 30 WTA pro. And as such, I believe that I have some very unique insights into what she can expect now. I want to give you my thoughts in form of a SWOT analysis. So I want to talk about Emma's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Let me know in the comments what you think we can expect from this young athlete. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. Let's start with strength. Where do I start? From incredible athleticism, really powerful ground game, scary returns, and a great serve, I think it's her really nonchalance, the freshness of her approach. Hey, I'm going to do me. I don't care who you are on the other side of the net, is her biggest strength. That paired with seems a really genuine joy of embracing the moment. Um, if she can keep that, that will be invaluable. Not letting the moment get too big for her, not being intimidated by what she has accomplished so far. I think that really let her play her game for 10 matches without dropping a set at the US Open. I also want to mention her support system. She has people to talk to like Virginia Wade, Tim Henman, the Murray brothers, um, that can keep her grounded and share some of their experiences. Um, also, it seems that her parents are very solid, grounded people, and that obviously is a plus. I see it as a strength that she's actually looking for a new coach. Um, from what I've heard, the working with Andrew uh, Richardson was only temporary. Um, it was only an arrangement, hey, you're coming to uh, the US Open and the tournament before t uh, with me. And I think she knows her own mind, that she really now wants to do everything in her power that she can control that will help her get to the next level. And yes, it is important that you surround yourself with people that know you, but from what I've heard, uh, Amber Richardson really said, I don't have the experience at the level that you will play now. So I think that was actually a good move. Remains to be seen. Um, it's gonna be difficult for her because now a ton of people will have opinions. So I think it's good that she knows her own mind, which brings me into possible weaknesses. Uh, from a playing standpoint, I don't see any, to be honest. As I said, she's got the firepower off the baseline. She's got a good serve. She's got a good return. Obviously, she can play. Do we want to get into, oh, we haven't seen any net play. We haven't seen uh, you know, any slices. I'm not going to even go there. If you win the US Open with the strokes that she has, you have no weakness because otherwise your opponents would have exploited those. What we really haven't seen is that she had to dig in deep. She didn't have to come uh, overcome any deficits. Uh, she didn't have to dig in deep in a third set. US Open really were the perfect storm for her didn't have, you know, didn't lose a set in 10 matches, but she will not dominate every single match that she's going to play. That's just inevitable. It's not going to happen. Nobody has done this. So especially with the expectations of the world now on her shoulders, she will have matches where nothing works. She may play hostile crowds, hasn't experienced that. So how can she handle, how will she handle tougher matches. She's never had to really do that at this level. She may have done that in junior, she may have done that at challengers, but this is a whole different ball game. So her inexperience might be a weakness. And please notice that I say might because we haven't seen that yet, but it will be interesting to see how she will handle the pressure, how she will handle the expectations of others, potentially her own, Although she seems very, very uh, smart to just say, I'm working one day at a time. I'm just working one shot at a time, basically. But that is something where her inexperience could be a weakness. Now, on the other hand, she's 18. If she now surrounds herself 
with the people that have had experience in that, it's going to be scary. If she develops as a player, as a person, the way that she's shown she's capable in the last, you know, months or so, it's going to be scary. Opportunities. This is an interesting one for me. The first thing that I see is her current ranking. She can now get into any tournament she wants to play, which makes scheduling so much easier. Before at a, you know, 150, whatever she was in the world, you enter a bunch of tournaments a week, and then you pretty much find out fairly shortly before where you get in. And that can lead to really chaotic travel across time zones, continents, different surfaces, and level of tournaments. So there's no real rhythm there. One week you're seated at a smaller tournament in the middle of nowhere, no spectators, miserable hotel, and you know the environment is not that great there. And the next you play qualies at the biggest tournament of the world. It's a lot, really, it's a lot on body and mind. Now though, you can really string together a bunch of tournaments according to what you want, because you get in into any tournament and you might even be seated. So that really, really helps. You can choose the surface, the country, you can plan the in-between tournament stays a lot better. You get better training opportunities. Now all players want to practice with you. Before that, if you were a nobody, uh, you know, better players might not want to play with you because they have no idea who you are. Uh, she'll be able to travel first class because now she's got the money. She can stay at the best places with the best facilities and all the tournaments will fall all over themselves to treat her very well, as they should. But the reality remains that second tier players, and I counted myself as that, don't get the same opportunities in terms of practice court selection, length of you know, the practice sessions that you get, you get other facilities. So she's now one of the stars. So now she can exactly ask for what she thinks is helpful for her. And she can now also afford to travel with the team. She has had a team there, but now she can really go with exactly who she thinks is going to help her. And she's already said she's looking for a new coach. So now she can have a trainer, a coach, a strength and conditioning person, whoever she thinks she needs and she can afford it. That is huge. I had to travel sometimes, you know, with my mom or my brother, uh, because I didn't have the money. And that is something that I think a lot of people don't understand what a benefit that is. And also that how you travel. If I can sleep on a plane because I'm in first class, I'm going to get to my destination in a totally different state than being crammed back in coach on a two time 13 hour uh, trip from Europe to um, Australia. So those are things, those are opportunities that she now has and she's going to take them. Earning opportunities. Emma Raducanu is now a brand, whether she likes it or not. And as such, she will be marketed. And who wouldn't love to market her right now? I mean, she is a marketing person's dream. She's very attractive. She speaks several languages, total uh, breath of fresh air, super charming, you know, seems to really have uh, for right now anyways, the understanding that she has obligations also, that all of a sudden, you know, she is somebody that can give back, that really has a platform. And as such, I cannot think of one product that could not benefit from Emma's persona. So she will have to pick and choose. Um, let's think about, for instance, the Asian market. They have not had a heron since Lina. Lina is an absolute hero there, heron there. And Emma Raducano being able to fluently speak Mandarin. Can you imagine what's going to happen when she'll play, you know, the Asian swing at the end of the season? We may not see it this year because of COVID still, but that's going to be nuts. And it will be a fantastic earning opportunity. So she will have a really, really, really full schedule. And if I have that correct, she is managed by the same guy who managed Maria Sharapova. And if we think about how much she's still making, although she's retired and she 
uh, you know, was banned from tennis for two years for doping, the possibilities for Emma Raducanu are endless because she has somebody who knows how this is done. Which brings me to threats. Emma Raducanu's world will never be the same. Even if she thinks she will remain the same person, her environment will not stay the same. Her friends at home, for instance, will not be able to relate to her going to the Met Gala, to waltzing into uh, Wall Street, to meeting royalty and becoming a super celebrity. I was never anywhere near her level of success, very obviously, but even at my level, relationships with friends suffer because they can't relate to you. They just cannot relate to you. And gone are the days when, you know, Emma can walk down the street and get some ice cream with her buddies because the media will be on her 24 seven and dissect every little thing she does. Will that affect her? I hope it won't because, you know, Emma Raducanu can now do things that mere mortals like you and me can't do. Walk into, you know, Wall Street, fly a private jet, meet all these celebrities, become one of them. That will have an effect, most likely. Again, I hope it won't, but it would take a lot to stay really level-headed, and I hope she does. It's, you know, it's been really too short to see how that really affects her. Right now, she really, you know, does really well with handling all the attention. She's all over, you know, TV circuits, and it's all new and it's great. But what happens? if she doesn't win the next tournaments without losing a set. Because those are the expectations now. Are they realistic? No, but there are a lot of people and they're unfortunately very loud um, in the media, in social media, that will put that pressure on her. And as much as you want, you cannot shield yourself a thousand percent from that. To my mind, it is completely unrealistic to expect for Emma to continue to just steamroll everybody because everything has changed. Now for the next eight months, she will have the opportunity to play every tournament that she wants to. But the way the ranking works is that you're collecting points. Every round that you win, every uh, higher ranked person that you beat, you get bonus points, you collect them. And then 52 weeks later, the same tournament, those points drop off. So if you don't defend those points, if you have only two tournaments where you made major points and you don't build up more cushion in the next eight months, you could see just as much rise as she had in the rankings, you could see that drop. And as much as she now has the opportunity to get more points, it's going to get into her mind at some point. We're coming up on Wimbledon. That's where I have my first huge chunk of points to defend. And I've seen more than just a few dozen of people crumble under that pressure, me included. That's just how the rankings work. So if she's not building her points now, that pressure becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And then unfortunately, we have the media and social media. And that is my biggest worry for Emma Raducanu, to be perfectly honest. Because even though she has, you know, an agent who can probably, uh, you know, hire somebody who filters her social media accounts, shields her from what the media is saying, it is not realistic that she will continue to just steamroll everybody. Just not going to happen. And I'm not doubting her ability. It's just she's 18. Okay. She's not going to do this. It would be fantastic because that would shut up all the naysayers who will undoubtedly come out and it will start getting really ugly. The pressure that builds with the rankings will get to her. And then ask, you know, somebody like Iga Sviantek, how the media jumped on, hey, how are you going to, you know, how are you going to handle the pressure of defending uh, Roland Garros? Ask Bianca Andrescu how much that question was asked. How are you going to deal with the pressure of defending your US Open title? And let's see how she handles it now that those points have dropped off for Bianca Andrescu. Um, ask Yelena Ostapenko how much it got to her when she couldn't defend those points from her Roland Garros win. 
So there are people like that. Ask Andy Roddick how she, uh, how she, how he felt when he was termed a one slam wonder. The previous three have also already been termed that. Ask him and he can tell you about something like that. Um, if you haven't watched Untold, Breaking Point on Netflix, the documentary on Marty Fish, I recommend highly that you do that because there is so much insider stuff that normal tennis fans have no idea about. Yet they're making these assumptions that they can put expectations on those players. And that again is what I'm most worried about, that that ugliness and that hate will come out and get to Emma at some point, even though she's trying to shield herself, which she will have to. There are already racist comments being made on her social media accounts or on fan accounts. And that will only get worse because unfortunately there's a slice of society that really, really, really wants to tear athletes down and especially female athletes. Think about a Naomi Osaka, think about Serena Williams, think about Simone Biles. With women, it takes on another dimension. To recap, unbelievable strength, unbelievable opportunities for Emma Raducanu. Potentially weaknesses, we don't know yet. It's just not been long enough. But there are certainly real threats out there for somebody so young and so inexperienced with that. So if you haven't taken anything away from this video, I urge you to really, really, really think about an 18 year old woman who has done something that nobody has ever done before her and give her the time to develop as a human being, to develop as a tennis player. And just keep that in mind that no, she does not have to live up to our expectations. She's already done something that nobody can take away from her. She's given us three unbelievable weeks at the US Open and she's already inspired millions of little kids that want to follow in her footsteps. So if you're ever tempted to say like, oh, that was a one hit wonder that, you know, she's a fluke or whatever it is. I hope I've given you some insight, some insight. And I can't even imagine some of the magnitude of the things that she has to deal with. So if we can understand that she's just a young woman and she's going to undertake something that is incredibly hard, maybe we can have a little bit more compassion for her if, and I'm not saying they will, maybe they won't, if things don't go just as smoothly as they've gone so far for Emma Raducanu.